Hey, Crossing Kids, welcome to Elementary at Home. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Jeff Parrott. I bet you're wondering where Claire is. Well, she'll be here in a minute, but I wanted to get all of this fun crafting stuff set up before she got here. Jeff, what is all that stuff? I'm so glad that you asked. Kids at home, I bet you're wondering too. I'm not sure if you all remember, but I love crafting. One of my favorite classes in seminary was Bible crafts, bringing people to a saving faith using hot glue, popsicle sticks, and pom-poms. Natalie, did you remember that I took that class? Yeah, we talked about it a lot. Right, well, I'm not sure that Claire realized how much I love, love, love crafting. Not only is it fun, but it actually helps us remember what we learn because we're left with something tangible, something physical that we can touch that helps us recall the lesson. So that's what I wanted to do today. Uh, Jeff, hey, what are you doing? What, you started this lesson without me? Um, uh, uh, Natalie, is there some kind of way that I can make this go away like Claire does, like hide it? I just- What are you, you have to clap first. That's oh, okay, uh, okay, that's better. Claire. Hey, you could come on in. Hey, welcome. I am so confused. What are you trying to hide? Claire, it's just a craft to help the kids remember the lesson today. But I'm going to need you to trust me. All right? We'll do the craft later. That sounds great. OK. Uh, so kids, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what it is. Awesome. Kids were so excited today because we're going to continue learning about the, the miracles, miracles of, of Jesus. Jesus. We did it! We finally right. did it! So, last week we learned about the time that Jesus fed 5,000 people with just two fish and five loaves of barley bread. Yeah, and today we're going to learn about another really awesome miracle from Jesus. Quick refresher though, let's remind the kids what a miracle is. Sure. A miracle is a surprising and welcome event that cannot be explained by science or nature and is considered to be the work of God. There are many miracles recorded in the Bible. And every miracle that Jesus did was to show that he is God and that he came to save his people from their sin and bring them back into a relationship with him. Today's miracle is especially important because in performing it, Jesus showed the world that he is trustworthy no matter what storm comes our way. Yeah, well, let's jump right in. Today's miracle takes place pretty soon after Jesus fed the 5,000. We can read about it in John 6. That's right, and also in Matthew 14 and in Mark 6. This story is recorded in three of the Gospels. So, whoops, I forgot my glasses again. I'm gonna need those to Oh, see. sure, okay. Oh, better. Oh, that's good. All right, are you ready for the story? I still feel like something is missing. Hmm. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> no way. All right. Oh, I like it. That looks I nice on you. I don't know, Claire. Okay, one more. Oh my gosh, Jeff, what happened? What, what, what's wrong? Jeff, I, Look at yourself. You're, you're a stick figure. Oh my gosh, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is not good. Natalie, uh, what, what, what do we do? Claire, I think you need to clap. Okay. <sighs> Whoa, Claire, that was a close one. Maybe, uh, maybe we should kind of cool it on the special effects. Um. Yeah, not a chance. But hey, <sighs> let's go ahead and get back to the story, shall we? Oh, okay. Yes. All right, picking up in John and Matthew and Mark, we read about this incredible account. So after Jesus had performed the miracle of feeding the 5,000, he withdrew to the mountains to spend some time by himself. His disciples had been by the Sea of Galilee. That's right. The Sea of Galilee is 650 feet below sea level, 150 feet deep and surrounded by hills. Now these physical features make it subject to sudden windstorms that would cause extremely high waves. It was dark and Jesus had still not joined them. So the disciples got into the boat and set off for Capernaum on the other side. Jeff, I can almost picture it. Can you just imagine it? As they set out from the middle of the lake, a strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. 
The waves rose higher and higher as the wind blew stronger and stronger. The disciples were afraid. They were a long way from the shore and the storm was bad. How are they going to make it all the way to the other side in this storm? When they had rowed about three or four miles, they looked out on the water and became terrified. They couldn't believe it. Coming towards them, walking on the water was Jesus. They were so afraid. But Jesus called to them and said, It is I. Don't be afraid. When they heard his voice, they took him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the opposite side of the shore. The disciples were amazed. I think it's surprising that Jesus said, It is I. Don't be afraid. The disciples were on a boat in the middle of the sea, and there were winds that were probably rocking the boat. Wouldn't you be afraid? Now, probably at first, but remember, Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. I mean, if Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, there had to be a reason why. Before Jesus walked on water, the disciples had seen him perform other miracles, like feeding the 5,000. They should have realized that Jesus would help them when they were in trouble. Faith is a mindset that expects God to act, and in that moment, the disciples had lost their faith. Are there times in life that you've been frightened or lost sight of Jesus? This miracle or sign is a reminder that Jesus is faithful no matter what storm comes our way. That's really, really important to remember. Our craft today will help us remember that Jesus is trustworthy. Well, what? What are we making? Well, I'm so glad that you asked, Claire. We're making walking on water bottles. What? That's weird. What is a walking on water bottle? You'll have to wait and find out. Seriously? But you said that after the lesson we could do the craft. Yeah, and we can. But first, all the kids at home need to see how well they were listening. It's time for another episode of, say it with me, Know, know Your Bible. Bible! Hi, friends, and welcome to Know Your Bible the game show that tests your biblical knowledge. I'm your host, Ginny Giffler. Now, friends at home, I know that you have been listening really well, but let's see if our contestants have been too. It's time to meet today's in-studio friends. You might remember our first contestant from the Advent, that means Christmas unit. She earned a gold star with her sweeping victory. It's Sarah Beth. Hi, Ginny, I am so excited to be back, but I'm confused. Who are you and where is Genevieve? <laughs> oh, well, Genevieve is on a two month cruise in the Galapagos Islands, if you can believe it. Kids, do you know where the Galapagos Islands are? They're right over there. <laughs> what are you pointing at and who are you talking to? Oh, well, I'm pointing at the big map that Miss Natalie will add in what we call post production. And I'm talking to my friends at home, silly. So, Sarah Beth. What have you been up to since you last played Know Your Bible? Well, as you know, I am obsessed with Disney Channel movies. Well, I heard they are in production for a Zombies 3, where we just might find out what is happening with Addison's white hair. Well, we know she's not a werewolf, but oh my gosh, is she an alien? Oh, that would be crazy. So I went like on a month long deep dive into the plot and I discovered that, oh, zombies and werewolves? That sounds a little spooky. Oh, hey, why don't you introduce us to our other contestant? I hear he's someone special to ya. What? Oh, sure. Uh, like, this is my dad, it's Officer Sandleton or whatever. Well, welcome to the show, Officer Sandleton. Oh, please, please, Miss Giffler. I'm, I'm not on duty right now. You can, you can call me Jacob. Oh, okay then, Mr. Jacob, welcome. So. You're a police officer? That's right, Ms. Kifler. I, I am a police officer in the Centertown Police Department, 3rd Precinct. And uh, like I said, I, I'm off duty right now. You know, we are just both so super happy to be here. Uh, you know, Sarah Beth, your, your mother and I were, we were so proud of how well you did last time. And that's just, honestly, that's why this is, is going to be so hard for me. What's so hard for you? Well, I mean, you know, honey, knowing, knowing you played so well, but that, you know, today I'm I'm gonna take you down. Oh, goodness. Do I need to remind you that this is a family show? <laughs> sure, sure, but you know, there's nothing wrong with a little friendly family competition. 
Don't listen to him. He's a big old softy. <laughs> hey, Dad? Yes, Pumpkin? No matter what happens today? Yes. Win or lose? Mm, yes. We are still getting ice cream after. You got it, sugar dumpin'. Please do not call me that on national television. Okay, blueberry muffin. Okay, well, I think that it is about time for our first question, but first, we need to see what you're playing for today. Are you indecisive? Do you have a hard time visualizing things without a tangible example? Then this is the prize for you. A collection of paint chips. Wow, that is cooler than an ice pack on a bunk knee. Okay, Sarah Beth, Mr. Jacob, are you ready? Friends at home, are you ready? Turn on those listening ears because here is your first question. Our story for today began when the disciples got into a boat. What happened next? Did they sit back and order food? Because I know when we go on boot rides, it's like so fun. I order club sandwiches and a Shirley Temple with extra cherries. It is so good. Oh, I am so sorry, Sarah Beth. That sounds like a lot of fun, but unfortunately, it's not quite right. This wasn't that kind of boat. Friends at home, do you remember what happened after they got into the boat? I do, Miss Giffler. You see, they started to row to the opposite shore. Now, if it had been me, I would have sent some of my men from the precinct out to do some recon out on this lake and check the conditions. But, you know, they didn't. The disciples rowed out away, and then the waves, they became very, very rough. And the wind picked up. And, you know, just for safety, these are not ideal conditions for boat. Doesn't sound like it. Well, friends at home, what do you think? Is Mr. Jacob right? Of course he is. Great job, Mr. Jacob. Way to go, Dad. <laughs> okay, let's get on to our next question. Question number two. Kids at home, get ready. What strange thing did the disciples see out on the water? Well, you see, this is what I mean about, you know, by running recon. If, if they had gone out there and, and prepared their tactical gear, they, they would have been ready for, for anything that they may have found out in that water. Dad, I don't think you're understanding the question. Do you remember? The topic for today is miracles of Jesus. Ginny, the disciples saw Jesus walking on water to them. He was walking on water to them. Right you are, chocolate chip pancake. I remember they saw him and they were afraid. They probably thought that they were out of their minds seeing some kind of ghost or something. But, but Jesus called out to them. He said, it is I. Do not be afraid. Yeah, I remember. Because, I mean, I thought that was pretty crazy. I mean, here comes Jesus walking on the water. How could you not be afraid? I mean, they trusted Jesus, and so they believed in him, and so they got in the boat, and then, incredibly, they were on the other side of the lake. They had not even crossed the shore yet, and then, boom, miraculously, they're on the other side. How does he pull that off? Wow, that sure does sound miraculous. What do you think, friends? Are they right? Of course they are. Great job, everybody. Let's take a look at our scores. Ooh, it looks like Mr. Jacob is in the lead. Let's hear that final question and see if Sarah Beth can catch up from behind. Okay, you have those thinking caps on? Here we go. Question number three. What was Jesus revealing or showing to be true about himself by performing the miracle of walking on water. Now he's a total superhero. Well, Snickerdoodle, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a stab at this one. If, if I may be so bold as to say, I, I do think you're partially right, but I think it's more than that. You see, we've seen that Jesus is indeed all powerful. He did feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. He turned water into wine. He healed the blind and sick. He walked on water and more. He could have performed any miracle any way he wanted to, but he chose to do specific things to teach us who he is. See, I think that he's what he's teaching us through this miracle is that he's trustworthy and that he's protecting us. We can trust him with our worries and fears because he's able to calm any storm. Friends at home, what do you think? That's right! Great job, everyone! Great job, friends at home! It looks like Mr. Jacob is our winner, but Sarah Beth, you did an awesome job, too. I think you both really 
Say it with me. Know no, your, your Bible. Bible. Thanks for playing, everyone. Hey, kids, we hope you had fun playing Know Your Bible. I bet you got all of the answers right. Okay, Jeff, I have been waiting patiently. What exactly is this craft? I'm sure all the kids at home are wondering if we will indeed need hot glue, pom-poms, and popsicle sticks. Now, if there's one thing you need to know about Bible crafts and crafting in general, it's this. Hot glue is the backbone of all crafting ventures. Am I right? I keep my hot glue gun handy at all times. Now, Jeff, no more suspense. What is all this stuff? Okay, so like I said, we're going to make what are called walking on water bottles. You can keep these in your room and use it as a reminder when you feel scared or lose sight of Jesus. You just shake it up like this, and you can remember that God is always sovereign. He's always in control. Because you'll see that eventually, everything that is supposed to be above the, water, above the water goes back. That is so cool. It's like the storm that gets calmed. I love that. That's right. Hey, I noticed there's a thing on it. What, is this? Oh my gosh, it's a Bible verse that we would put on it That's to help right. us remember. It says, turn all your worries over to God. He cares about you. That's from 1 Peter chapter five, verse seven. I love that verse. All right, let's flex these craft muscles, Jeff. All right. Teach you, me, how do ready, I make Claire? them? I'm ready. Okay, so this is a relatively simple craft, but okay. here we go. First, I want you to take a little bit of water okay. and pour a little bit of water in there. Not too much, maybe like halfway up or so. Okay. Ah! Oh, that's all right. If you make a little bit of a mess, that's all right. I don't <laughs> I don't want to make that. It might be easier if you have a funnel. The oil. But that's all right. Okay. Yeah. All okay. right. So next, take some food coloring and see how this is like a little bit of a greenish color, but you can make it whatever color you I'm want. Maybe you want it to blue. look like the ocean, but yeah, you can do blue. I'm do be blue because it's like water. That's great. Oh no, the blue's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super set. Okay, I'm gonna do Maybe, yellow then. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do yellow. That's good. All right, so add in a little bit of food coloring. Okay. And if you have any uh, jewels or things that you might want to put in, things that will kind of float around in the water, oh. now's a good time to put those in too. Okay, I'm gonna check some jewels in. Very good. Because these will be like the 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 storms, the things floating That's around. That's exactly right. Okay, That's okay. great. So I got jewels. All right, and now see what? how much oil there is right here. You're gonna fill up just a little bit of oil. Okay. Maybe about as half as much oil as you have. Water. I think I want a little more yellow. I don't oh, think yeah, that's go very for it. pretty. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, Jeff, do you know the science behind why this works? It has to do with density and it has to do with physics and all the things that our teachers taught us long, long ago. Okay, so you can see already that the oil is separating from the water. Now, go ahead and put the cap on top. Okay. And it's great if you have a bottle that locks really tightly, maybe one like this or one that you can screw on really tight, make sure it's good because the whole point of this craft is that you can shake it up. So, if you want to go ahead and try it, I'm ready. I think also, guys, if you're making this at home, you could really use any kind of bottle. Yeah. But we would recommend that you put um, some hot glue or super glue on the um, cap so when you twist it on, it won't, it won't um, spill. That's smart. Oh, that's really cool. Are we ready? The storms of storms life are come. coming, but they settle and are calmed again. Look how it starts to settle out. Oh, that is so cool. Jeff, I, I think that you are right. It is really cool to have a tangible, physical reminder about stories like this. They really do help us um, to remember things. So guys, I hope you will make these at home. Yeah, Claire, these are a great way to remember not only the story from today, but more importantly, that God is sovereign. He has power over all things. And God's taking care of us. The story reminds us that God protects us and controls the storms in our lives. And that really ties into our memory verse for this unit, which reminds us why John wrote about these miracles in the Bible. John 20, 31 says this, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Guys, not only is Jesus the Son of God, he is trustworthy. You can know that when you're scared, he is protecting you no matter what storm comes your way. Hey, if you guys are still sitting, will you stand up and sing along with this fun worship song with us? We'll see you guys back here next week for another episode. Thanks for watching.
dark became light I believe it, I believe it, yeah You spoke my name and my heart came to life I believe it, I believe it, yeah I wanna sing about it my side. 